Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Simple Weed Park. God damn it, I really should have ended the last episode and saved upstairs. But anyway, so in the last episode we ventured deep into the pillow factory and learned that that Uncle Chuck, Chuck Edmund, had uploaded himself to Pillowtron 3000 computer, and now he and the AR AI are one or something along those lines. I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Oh, shut up already. And now we are about to enter the deep if into the core of the computer down, and uh, shut it down. You can possibly imagine. And also shut him up. And so, I without further ado, let's continue with the rest of the game here and also end this playthrough in this episode because we are so close to the end that I'm planning to play to the very end now. So, let's go. Dolores, you are making a big mistake. What happened to you, Uncle Chuck? I have been uploaded to Pillowtron 3000. Yeah, you told us Together that last time. we are now invincible. You could have joined us, Dolores, but you had to leave me to be a... to be a game designer. You've been corrupted by bad tube technology. I will destroy you, Uncle Chuck. Or what's left of my Uncle Chuck. You will never defeat me, Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we trapped? <laughs> yes, we are. The door is locked tight. I'm trapped in here. I am one with the Pillowtron computer! And we can't even switch characters. Okay, so we are stuck with Dolores. Death is okay, so there is big tubes. These extra large PT-109 tubes are what makes Pillowtron 3000 function. So we have to get rid of this. with the Pillowtron computer! But should we talk to him first? Death Does it look like I can? All that awaits you now. Okay, well, I guess we use you these tubes. You will never defeat me! You can't defeat me, Dolores! You will- Dolores, shutting me down will only make me stronger! Uh, I don't think it works like that. I Help me, Dolores! Working on it. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. You will never yeah, defeat sure. me! Save me, Dolores! You found all the clues I left! Yeah, yeah, work it out. Help me, Dolores! I knew you would come, Dolores. You were too smart not to figure out the puzzles. I knew you would figure it out and come for me. Mm-hmm. Dolores, it's me, your Uncle Chuck. I'm really? glad you came to save me. Save me, You're Dolores. insane. You tried to kill us. Why should I save you? It's good to see you, Uncle Chuck. How about opening the door and letting me out? Hmm. You tried to kill us. Why should I save you? Because I discovered something you'll want to know about. Pull up a chair, Dolores. This is going to get crazy. <laughs> okay. One, you locked me in here, and I can't get a chair. And two, oh, don't worry, I could how can it get any crazier than your uncle downloading himself into a tube-based computer? Good point. But it's going to get crazier. It all started when I discovered the Tron tubes held the secret to AI. Mm, agricultural investment? Acne uh, intervention, artwork insemination. I have no idea what this is. Uh, artwork insemination? No, artificial intelligence. I know, Uncle Chuck. I was just trying to lighten the mood. As I made the Tron machines smarter and smarter, they began revealing secrets. Then they invited me to join them inside. Well, it started out as an invitation, but quickly turned into a demand. Could you just? Uh, shut off the Tron machines. Was this after the factory burn, burnt down? I'm not convinced you are not crazy and insane. Was this after the factory burned down? They burned down the factory as a warning, forcing me to rebuild it in secret and pin the blame on the security guard. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you have just shut them off? Couldn't you just shut off the Tron machines? It wasn't that easy. They had become more powerful and taken control. I was also addicted to the power they gave me. Well, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced you're not crazy and insane. 
I know how it must sound, Dolores. Everything I learned slowly drove me crazy. Let's move on, Uncle Chuck. Okay, this is where it gets really weird. I downloaded this text adventure. Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. Downloaded? You mean it was shareware? Downloaded? You mean pirated? Downloaded? You mean you purchased it online? Not sure if you could purchase uh, purchase games online back in the 80s or even pirate them. You could burn discs, and I admit I did I did that too, but that was in the 90s. Was it shareware? Downloaded? You mean it was shareware? Well, look who's being judgmental. It doesn't <laughs> matter how I got it. It matters to the thousands of people who earn a living making games. Yeah, that's okay. Pirates wouldn't have bought it anyway. It's their own fault for not having a demo. Well, isn't shareware kind of like a demo? Uh, didn't it ser serve kind of the same purpose? It matters to thousands of people who earn a living making games. Okay, now you're just getting preachy. Can I get on with my story? The more I played and modded the game, the more I realized not only was this adventure game a little simulation, but the world we live in is also just a simulation. But worse than a simulation, we are all just characters in a video game. Oh my god. The game is self-aware. That's insane. Think about it, Dolores. Who is your mother? Do you even have a mother? Have you ever spoken about her or even thought about her? No. No, I haven't. Think, Dolores. Think about all the odd things in this world. Like there have been 3,000 people in the phone book? Uh, yeah, uh, we read that in his diary. Like there have been no school in Thimbleweed Park? There is only one house in the ho only one house in the whole town? Well, there's multiple buildings, but actual houses. Yeah, there, there's maybe only one or two. The highway e ends out by the bridge. Like everyone fought walls about adventure games. Good point. Like we go around collecting specks of dust. Like everyone fourth walls about adventure games? Everyone asks a lot of questions about adventure games and adventure game design, don't they? Mm -hmm. Well, adventure games are cool. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to talk about them? Yeah, okay, valid point. <laughs> mm, like the sheriff and the coroner are the same actor. Like the sheriff and the coroner are the same actor? And the manager. Exactly! Probably saves money on voice acting talent and art and animation. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like there being 3,000 people in the phone book? Like there being 3,000 people in the phone book? Yes! There are 80 people in Thimbleweed Park and 3,000 names in the phone book. Dolores, these are not people from our world, they are from the upper world. Upper world. Upper world? That's what I've come to call it. We are the upper world for Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. They are the upper world for us. There are probably endless upper worlds, each more sophisticated than the last, all treating the lower world like it was just a game. You're starting to scare me, Uncle Chuck. Good. We need to be scared. Hmm. Kinda sounds like Matrix to me, and how do I think about it? Like there be no school in Thimbleweed Park? Like there being no school in Thimbleweed Park? And only one kid in the whole town! Do you remember going to school? Having any friends? No, I don't. Mm, only one house in the whole town? Like there is only one house in the whole town? Exactly! Where does everyone live? We have only one house in a town of 80 people! Well, they could be living in the, in the same building where, where their businesses are. I don't know. And highway ends out by the bridge. Like the highway ends out by the bridge? Ever walked out there? Ever wanted to walk out there? You don't have the desire because it wasn't programmed into you. It's not part of the game. Well, she did uh, take a bus and go to some other city far from Th uh, Thimbleweed Park to become a game designer or programmer at Mucus Flame Games, so she did that. And collecting specks of dust? Like we go around collecting specks of dust? That's not dust you're collecting! They are pixels! The mm -hmm. building blocks of our world! They are put there to prey on the compulsive among those in the upper world. Okay, we believe you. I've heard enough. I believe you, Uncle Chuck. Well, I'm glad, Dolores. I knew I could trust you. We have to hurry! 
The developers know we're onto them and are trying to reboot the game. If they do that, we're caught back in our endless cycle of pointless pretend free will. We need to shut down Pillartron 3000, delete the game, and end our existence. It's the only way we'll truly be free. Well, okay. But I won't be deleting the... or un uninstalling the game, though. I still have to make some... Uh, I still have to record some other footage for my thoughts on the video of Thimbleweed Park. So we don't ha we don't have free will. No, if you have been programmed, delete the delete the world and end our existence. But I am shutting down Pillowtron three th three thousand. Mm -hmm. Delete the world and end our existence. Yes, it's the only way. The developers keep rebooting us back into the same story over and over. They will do anything to keep us from deleting the game. Thimbleweed Park is a cash cow. <laughs> they can't let it end. We don't have free will? No, Dolores. You only have three things you can say. Two now. Can you make <laughs> yourself say anything else? Nope. No, I can't. But I am shutting down Pillowtron 3000. No, not this Pillowtron 3000. The original Pillowtron 3000. The concept art wireframe Pillowtron 3000. Hmm. The developers transferred all the code to it when they saw how close I was getting. You must find it and shut it down before they reboot us. Okay, I'm back to thinking you are crazy. Wireframe Pillowtron 3000. You are insane. Let's do this thing. Okay, well, I'll just say that. Oh, hello. Hi, guys. We've been watching on the big monitor outside. It's mind-blowing. What the f***? It's all fake, like my ex-wife. <laughs> I know none of this is real now, but I still need to clear my father's name. I was so close to getting a big payoff. I can't let this slip away. Before it all ends, I just want one more show. One last chance to live in the f limelight. I've hidden away four inventory items that will fulfill your endings. Oh, Take how them convenient. and you'll be free! Dolores, I saved the best one for you. I can't tell you how to use it. The developers deleted all my dialogue in the hopes of keeping it from you. <laughs> your only clue is back in the original Kickstarter video. Everything you need is there. I'm going deeper into the simulation now so they can't find me. Good luck. And hurry! I love you and am very proud of you. Even me? Shut up, Ransom. Shut up, Red. <laughs> Part 9. The Deleting. Okay, so. I need to do something with this balloon animal and venture into the wireframe world to shut down the original Pilotron. Escaping from the endless cycle of pretend choice depends on me. But most important... But most important of all, I need to say goodbye to dad. Oh yeah, we, we still need to do that. Say goodbye to dad, figure out what to use this balloon animal with. Shut down wireframe pillowtron in wireframe wire world. Okay, and as for the others, you got Game of the Year award. It's a Game of the Year award. Best game of 1988. I can't believe this world is going to get shut down with me in it. I need to find the secret my employers are looking for and get it to them before the game is deleted. It's worth millions to me. Find what my employers are looking for, escape this world before it's shut down. Okay, well I do know who we are supposed to give this award to and where the secret is that she is looking for. And as for you, you got Chuck's confession. It's a confession from Chuck Edmund. It says he framed Mr. Reyes, the security guard. I need to clear my dad's name before the game is deleted. I know it won't matter, but it's important to me the world knows, if only for a few seconds. Find someone to give the evidence to that will get the story out. Clear dad's name. And lastly, Ransom. Well, there's still Franklin too, but still. I'm tired of being a beeping failure and the butt of everyone's jokes. Maybe there's a lesson somewhere in all this. If I could just do one more show and see if I can insult people without being cruel. Find someone to give the I'm sorry for being a dick card to go back into my flashback and do one last show and don't blow it. And you, Franklin? I'm tired of Savior pushing me and everyone else around. I'm finally going to stand up for myself and give him the business. I need to say goodbye to Dolores before it's too late. 
stand up to Xavier, tell Dolores I love her, I'm sorry and goodbye. Okay, well let's move you to the penthouse at this point. To the penthouse suite. And then we and then we and then we do what we need to do with Ray, Reyes and Ransom. Then we take Dolores and make her come here. And finish the business with her uh, between her and and dead dad. And then we finish the game. So let's start with Reyes. Oh uh, sorry, Ray. And we go to the hotel at this point. And we need to go. Oh, the manager is not here. The Sheriff Arino is not here. No one is here, actually. Well, there is one person. Ron Gilbert. Hey, nerd. You won some kind of dumb award nobody cares about. <laughs> oh my god! We won! I have to go tell the others. Yeah, he... nerd. Now I need to find the secret I'm being paid to recover. It must be in here somewhere. And I do know, and I do know where it is. But wait, that was 1988 game game award, right? And now it's year nine, and now and now it's year 1987. Did Maniac Mansion come out in '88? That that might be it. I'm I'm not sure. And did they? Did Lucas Arts or Ron Gilbert or anyone working on the game win any awards for the game? Uh, I sh I should look I should look into it afterwards. Maybe maybe that maybe the whole award thing was a reference to Maniac Mansion or something along those lines. But here it is: puzzle dependency chart. It's a bunch of boxes and lines. Probably something to do with game design. Hmm. I wonder. Oh, I also I also just realized we didn't even need to enter the ransom joker like contest. Uh, as ransom, hm. they cut they cut that they cut that away from the casual mode as well. They cut so many things and locations uh, in in the casual mode. But yeah, pick up the chart because that's what we need. Congratulations, Agent Ray! You have found a secret to game design, the fabled puzzle dependency chart. It can be all yours if you get me out of here. I don't want to be deleted with the rest of them. How is he talking to you? We will her? begin the uploading process momentarily. Was the money deposited into my account like we agreed? Yes, Agent Ray. We honor our agreements. And there she goes. That tickled. So now, as you can see, Ray is gone. Ray is gone. <coughs> Excuse me. Ray is gone. So now let's move on to Reyes. And use the map. And we go to, what's it? A Street. Okay, and uh, to the Nickel News. And we give this confession to Natalie. I already have it. Yep, uh, yep, yeah, a uh, gift. How can I help you, Agent Reyes? Caught any more killers? I have a big scoop for you. I think you're going to win that Pulitzer. Must be a journalist, a journalist award or something. I finally have the evidence we are looking for. Well, let's say this. I think you're going to win that Pulitzer. Calm down, Jimmy. What do you have? Chuck friend my father for the f uh, factory fire. The fire was started by the Tron machines. We are all just living in a giant. We are, we are all just living in a giant computer game. Well, let's say this. First. Let's say this first. We're all just living in a giant computer game. Wow, I kind of suspected that. Did I you have know? a reporter's notebook full of odd anachronisms and continuity errors. Hmm. Okay, well. Here. Jock framed my father for the factory fire. Can you write up the story and get it out before the game is deleted? I'm on it, Scoop. You're gonna clear your father's name, and I'm gonna finally get that Pulitzer. Not that it's really going to matter, but it's important to me. Give me a few minutes. I'm a fast typer. 
Almost done. No, oh, that's fast. Done. Nickel News. Factory guard cleared in fire. Chuck takes all responsibility. And reporter wins Pulitzer, Pulitzer, whatever. And now uh, Reyes is gone, and then Ransom. And first we go to Quickie Pal. Oh wait, oh, I was controlling, controlling Dolores there. <laughs> I thought I was controlling, controlling Ransom there for a moment. But yeah, we go to the Quickie Pal as Ransom. They're closed. What do you mean they are closed? But what does it say? They're closed. They're closed. Okay, fine. Well, shit. Oh wait, we have a, we have half the card already. I thought, I thought that we had to in the hard mode we had to go to the Quickie Pal and pick one of the cards. Like I'm sorry for being a dick card or something like that. But apparently we have it already. But I could be wrong. Maybe we didn't need to do that in the hard mode either. I just had that. But I, I just remember those cards being there. At least a diner should be open still. Yes, it is. And we're supposed to give this card to Sandy for some reason, which is kind of odd because he insulted the gypsy lady and she was the one who cursed him. So it's kind of weird that, that out of all people he gives the card to Sandy. And I don't, I don't even, I don't even have re remember him insulting Sandy at, at, at any point in the flashback or anywhere else, unless you come in here as ransom, of course. But there's never, there's never really any reason. Oh wait, there is a reason. You had to eat a hot dog as ransom as well. There, there was that. Well, anyway, uh, give it to Sandy. I got this for you, Sandy. Look, I'm not one to get all a fall of. Jetic, but I'm sorry for being a to you. I really mean that. I have one big favor to ask you. Can you send me to my flashback? I want to do just one more show and maybe not be such a. He deserves one last chance, Sugar Cakes. Okay, Ransom, but only because you got me this nice card. Let's see if I can remember the lines. I'd look into that crazy clown that lives out at the old circus. He's been out there since the circus closed down years ago. Never takes his makeup off. He's got serial killer written all over him. It all happened about nine or ten years ago. Ransom the Jerk was the featured act at Stupendous Brothers Circus. He was about ready to go on stage and meet his well-earned doom. Not tonight. Well-earned doom is not on the program. This is my last chance. I'm not gonna blow it. I'm ready to go on stage and insult the crap out of these thimbleweed uh, fine folks. Okay, and we got all the makeup on and, 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 and everything, so we don't need to worry about that in this flashback, so let's go on stage. Hello, faces. I'm Ransom the insult clown. I hope no one gets their feelings hurt easily, and if you do, well, I'm sorry. I really mean that. <laughs> hey, dude, with the stupid mustache. Hey, you, dude with a stupid mustache. A 1970s porn star called, he wants his mustache back. And, well, it's not really that bad or insulting. At, le uh, at least I don't think so, but... If you grew a hipster goatee, Goatee, you wouldn't look half bad. You know, if you grew a hipster goatee, you wouldn't look half bad. Hey, kid with the crappy wheelchair. Hey, you! Kid with a crappy wheelchair! Were you people in past life or something? You should contact the Ransom Foundation about getting a new one for free. Oh, that's nice. You should contact the Ransom Foundation about getting a new one for free. And you ugly lady with the hairy mole. Hey you! Ugly old lady with the hairy mole! Or is it your parasitic twin? I went to med school and you might want to get that looked at. I went to med school. You might want to get that looked at. He went on for another two hours, insulting everyone he could. 
but they were good-natured and respectful. It was his best show ever. He was on top of the world, and everyone loved him. Oh, good for you, Ransom. Okay, so Ransom is gone, and now we go to the hotel and to the penthouse suite. And here we are. And now to Franklin. Hmm? Yeah, we have we read this already. Okay, so now let's let's give Savior a piece of piece of our mind. Hey, new ghost! I told you not to bug me. Can I please have the crystal? Let's be nice for, uh, for starters. Can I please have the crystal so I can speak to Dolores one last time? Not a chance, new ghost. The crystal behind me has untold powers, and no one will ever get it. Mm hmm Well, you, well, you're a bully and a tyrant. You're a bully and a tyrant. Whoa! Sounds like New Ghost found some spunk. My name is not New Ghost. It's Franklin. Everyone hates you. You clearly have self-esteem issues. We're all sick of your bullying. We all just want to move on. We are not going to be ruled by you anymore. Well, the name is Franklin for starters. My name is not New Ghost, it's Franklin. Careful, or it's to the basement for you. Hmm. You have little <laughs> you have little hands. Not going to be ruled by you anymore. We're not going to be ruled by you anymore. I've about had enough of you, New Ghost. You clearly have some self esteem issues. Okay, that kind of hurt. <laughs> We're all sick of your bullying. Really? Am I that bad? Yeah, pretty much. Everyone hates you. Everyone hates you. I just want to see my wife again. I'm lonely, and I miss her. I died and I never told her how much I loved her. It's okay. Aww. We all miss someone we love. Now I'm gonna feel bad. <laughs> but we're not gonna take the crystal like that. Yoink. And now go to the secret room and wait for Dolores. Okay, well, let's go. Okay, now we can see him. And talk to Dolores. Oh, Dad. Nothing more touching than a than a daughter and a dead father talking while standing on a satanic looking pentagram on the floor. It's so good to see you. Well, it's good to see you too. I wish I, you know, stood up for you against Chuck. That's okay. You've lost some weight? Well, you could say that. Not sure how it happened, but I'm, you know, dead. And I think your uncle had something to do with it. It's okay. I think I know what is going on. Uncle Chuck found something amazing. It turns out we're all living in a simulation. A giant adventure game. I'm so sorry for everything, Dolores. Wait, you're... Uncle Chuck is an evil, you know, jerk what? A simulation? That can't be true. It's true. I'm on my way to shut down the Master Tron machine and free us all. Uh, by free us all, you mean go back to our real lives? End the suffering permanently? Ah, by free us all, end the suffering permanently? I honestly don't know, Dad. All I know is this has to end. I trust you, Dolores. I always have. I'm so sorry for everything, Dolores. I should have stood up for you. You were a gnarly dad. Maybe because of the way Uncle Chuck treated you, you always pushed me to be anything I wanted to be. You have nothing to be sorry for. Aw, isn't that sweet? Wait, your Uncle Chuck is an evil, you know, jerkwad? Oh, Uncle Chuck was a jerkwad, but mostly because he was corrupted by the machines. When he discovered the truth, he knew what he had to do. He was a jerk to me before that. <laughs> I yeah. know he was. You should get going. I love you. We're all counting on you. Thanks, Dad. I think I can finally move on now. I love you, Dad. I love you too, Dolores. And there he Goodbye, goes. Goodbye, Dolores. Goodbye, Dad. To the afterlife, I guess. I don't know where I don't know where these characters go since they are just video game characters, but 
anyway. So we are done here, and we go to... Oh yeah, we go to the, the murder scene here. Remember what Uncle Chuck told us earlier? He told us to go and watch the original uh, Kickstarter video. And actually, I have done that already. I watched it before I started recording, so I know what we have to do. We have to use the balloon animal on this corpse here. Maybe I should save the game first. Well, okay, let's do that real quick. There we go, okay. So, let's use the balloon animal. Oh no! This can't be good. The game is glitching. Tubular. Uncle Chuck was right. This must be the wireframe world, the game's concept level the developers built to test their design. I need to find the wireframe pillowtron and shut it down before they can reset the game. Okay, we'll do that. But let's look around. We have, we have no hurry. Trestle Trail to Thimbleweed Park, 1.7 miles. Gross. Hmm, the corpse looks the same, pretty much. And we go here. Yes. So I'm just wondering, is the sewer entrance here? No. Okay. So quiet. It's quite uh, quite eerie, actually. Timberweed Park. And here's the town hall. The very first uh, design of it, anyway. Hm, we are actually quite tall. We are taller than the damn doors. Okay, and there's Smart by Timberweed Electronics. And here's a diner. Can we go here? Town outskirts. Ah, oh, here's a quickie pal. These simpler graphics kind of remind me of South Park now. Walk to Vista. Hmm, and this is a very simplified map. But let's not let's not go there yet, because I want to I want to explore the wireframe the worlds and uh, Timbleweed Park. Timbleweed Park bus. A uh, bus station, hardware and paint. We can ap apparently go inside here, okay. So this building was uh, cut off from the game. So no, it doesn't even exist. In the, it doesn't even exist in the hard mode. Oh, cult books. That thing is still here, but in a different location. And how about? Over here. Park Arcade. Well, at least we can enter here. But for some reason we couldn't enter the arcade in the, we you know, the actual final game for some reason. Maybe that, maybe that's for the hard mode too. I forgot to check that, that, oh hey, that's, uh, Zack McCracket or whatever his name was. That must be a poster of that adventure game. Zack McCracket or whatever the name was. Yeah, I forgot to check that that was the arcade. Was the arcade uh, a patch or a DLC or something? I forgot to check that, but I'm quite sure that it was that it was patched. The uh, post office, Timbleweed, Nickel News. There is classified as a graphic design separately. Okay. Hitchin Post Bar. Oh. Yeah, this was cut from the game as well. Ah, Boltron 3000. I wonder what they were planning to do with a Boltron, a Boltron 3000 originally. Safely first savings, the bank. The bank looks pretty much the same. The office part of that one guy is just missing. And here's the vault. That which we couldn't... Ah, there's his office. 
uh, which we couldn't enter in the in the in the final game. I think that's the entire town. Okay, I think we are pretty much. I think we have explored the entire town now. So let's continue the vista, but we are not gonna go to the factory just yet. I wanna check where where else can we go. So there's the vista. Abandoned factory. Mansion mansion is there. And uh Yeah, looks like we can't go anywhere else. And so let's take a quick look at the mansion mansion. Ah, that looks very familiar, doesn't it? That looks Almost identical to the actual Maniac Mansion from the Maniac Mansion. <laughs> and apparently they haven't even done any animations or anything for this gate here. It's just there. And we can walk over it. Okay, walk to the door. Yeah. Oh! Want food? Come here, dearie. Jesus Christ! <clears throat> that, that got me. Jesus. That was easily the most horrifying part in this entire game. I completely forgot about that. That it was a thing. Jesus Christ. This clock looks vaguely familiar. Yeah, it must be a reference to the to the clock in Maniac Mansion and Day of the Tentacle. Anything here? Nope. I should play Maniac Mansion at some point in the future. Speaking about Maniac Mansion, there is a <laughs> there is its poster. And the Secret of Monkey Island, of course, and I don't recognize this one. And I can't even read it because it's so blurry. But two out of three. I recognize two out of three. And we can't enter there. Yeah, what do we have here? Hmm. Not oh, the library. The library looks pretty much the same, but smaller. Can we use the the stairs? No, we can't. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. They haven't even finished the uh, ladders all the way up, as you can see. That's a very big ass TV. Okay, I think that was everything in the mansion. Okay, so, oh, not that. Oh, uh, uh, I tried to uh, fast travel with a map. Here we go. So, now let's go to the factory. Contempt danger, no trespassing, Thimblewood Park uh, PD, Police Department. 174 Pillow Masters, the mechanized pillow factory of the future, established in 1954. Now, where's the one? There's the gate. No, this is very pixely, pixelated. And what do we have here? Some sort of office. And here? Okay. Certain death. Hm, <laughs> certain death. And lasers, but we don't need to worry we don't need to care about them at all. And here is the fan, I take it. Yeah, but we don't we don't need to care about the fan either. I mean it is just a just a uh, what what was it called? Wireframe world. So we don't need to care about that. And here is the wireframe pillowtron. It's so amazing. So much evil can exist in such simple art. Yeah, so evil. Ooh. Okay, so I'm supposed to just, I don't know, use it? That doesn't seem to work. Walk to open it. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I see. This looks like the wireframe pillowtron Uncle Chuck described. I just need to push all the tubes in, and the world will be shut down, and will end the madness of no real choice and control over our destiny. Of course, that's what Uncle Chuck says, and there's still a chance he's insane. And lying. But yeah, these look radioactive. But we have to do it. And last one. Last one. I hope Uncle Chuck knows what he's talking about. Yeah, we can. We can only hope for the best and and fear the worst. I need to let's get up my nerve. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, Dolores. You can do it. I got them, and not this again. Just do it already. Okay, this is it. I'm going to do it. Please. Let's end this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Thimbleweed Park on casual mode. I'm just gonna let the credits roll here and and I'll be back here later to give my brief thoughts on the game and on the, ca on the casual mode uh, specifically. So, be right back.
So that was Thimbleweed Park, ladies and gents. It's just as good as I remember. Well, the core story and puzzles we got to experience on casual mode anyway. The hard mode was much more fulfilling experience because it had more puzzles, more challenging puzzles and more locations. I'm actually a little shocked how many scenes were deleted from the casual mode. The ransom jerk-alike contest, the forest trail, the secret hideout, radio station. And I actually just checked and confirmed that, yes, the arcade is only available in the hard mode, offering new puzzles and minigames you can play if you find certain tokens. I think I need to replay through the hard mode again by myself for my thoughts on video of Thimbleweed Park after all. So, lots of content missing on casual mode. Much more than I expected to be honest. So naturally, I think the best way to play the game is by playing the hard mode. The intended way to play it. It just feels much more rewarding, adds more story, everything. But I had a good time replaying the game on casual too after over 3 years since my blind playthrough. And you do get the full main story still, which of course is most important at the end of the day. Speaking about the story, I don't know if I said this 3 years ago, but the ending of Thimbleweed Park reminds me of the ending of Monkey Island 2, Lichuk's Revenge, which was also kind of a mindfuck. And even a little controversial at the time, since many people didn't either get it or just didn't like it. Thimbleweed Park naturally gets away with it since it's not Monkey Island, but its own thing. I personally enjoyed the ending. Didn't expect that the first time I played. Love it or hate it, you got to admit, you did not expect it the first time playing. And even though the puzzles were more simple and there was less of them overall, I still got a little stuck for short periods of time even in this playthrough. Funnily enough, I do remember some of the hardest puzzles from the hard mode, but not the simplest ones, and so that's why I sometimes forgot what I had to do next. But it makes sense, I think. The most memorable puzzles tend to be those you struggle with the most, for better or worse. I still like all the main protagonists in the game, and even all of the side characters, I don't really, I can't really think of any anyone who was uh, too annoying to my taste or anything. Well, Doc was kind of annoying, always, always sticking and, and making that damn noise. And in case I didn't make it clear before, Ransom the Clown is my favorite of all the five protagonists. He was great. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play as Ransom on a casual mode as much as I would have liked. Ransom and to be fair, everyone really had more stuff to do in the hard mode, but especially Ransom. So maybe that's why this experience didn't feel as fulfilling or fun as the hard mode did, because Ransom didn't have as many things to do. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the casual mode. It's okay and it's fun, but not nearly as good or satisfying as the hard mode. So if you want to get everything out of Thimbleweed Park, then naturally uh, play the hard mode. I would even go as far as to suggest that play the hard mode and just don't bother with the casual mode. Unless you really, really want to uh, have some replay value, then sure. Play through the casual mode first and then come back later to play through the hard mode. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say at this point. Oh, I almost forgot to remind you folks that we are not done with Thimbleweed Park just yet. In the upcoming days I'll start playing the new Thimbleweed Park mini-adventure about Dolores, so stay tuned for that. Like I said, I'm gonna make uh, my thoughts on video of Thimbleweed Park at some point in the not too near future, unfortunately. I got like two other my thoughts on videos that, that, that I want to make before Thimbleweed Park, so I'm working on one of them right now at the moment. And besides, I do need to replay the game on hard mode again anyway, so yeah, it's gonna take some time before I get my thoughts on Thimbleweed Park video out. But until then. Thank you for watching my casual playthrough of Thimbleweed Park, and see you next time in a new adventure.